good evening everybody meeting after gap of 3 4 days and we are again meeting for the learning homeopathic philosophy by dr jt kend we have started with the first chapter the seek from the jt kend and in the introductory part of this chapter he tried to explain the correlation between the homeopathy and allopathy he compared the homeopathy and allopathy on one side homeopathy based upon the fixed cardinal principles never changing based upon nature's laws whereas the other pathy which never have a single principle and which depends upon the opinions basically the seniority makes the difference but once thought it change their treatment changes and accordingly their aspect changes and then why it happens because because they consider us only the material aspect of the human being not taking into consideration the dynamic human behind that and because of which the problem arises when we deal with homeopathy we deal with the dynamic human being as well as the um, material human being and because of which we take into consideration the holistic aspect of the human being and in order to explain what is exactly mean in the aphorism the first aphorism the physician's high and only mission is to restore the sick to help to cure as it is termed what the sick means for which he has written this whole chapter so these two words denotes a lot it is a concept that the sick is nothing but the individual as a whole is sick and who is individual individual is not only the material not only the physical body but individual is the person who with material body at the same time with a specific internal mind with specific his soul or vital principle and whole that whole constitutes the human being so if a person becomes disease or person has any problem which is vital force it expresses in the form of some signs and symptoms and which are always functional in nature to start with they never affect directly a cells or tissues patient always starts with some futures he is not feeling well he is feeling bored he is getting disturbed all those are functional features of the disorder first because it depends upon the law of biological development which we have learned on that day functions creates the organs and same example kent started explaining about so we have learned that example when he started with that paragraph the simple example of one patient who was suffering that he was having some problem with the the doctor i am having some sickness i am not feeling well every doctor examined his heart examined his all things and they they used to find it out what is wrong with his cells or tissues and nothing found wrong so they labeled that you are not having any disease because there is no evidence at the pathological level and that's why what they says but at present the patient is not sick says the learned doctor but what do these symptoms mean this is what we have finished i do not sleep at night i have pains and aches my boils do not move these are the symptoms and then patients that doctor explains oh well you have constipation that is the first thing that has been diagnosed is it a diagnosis it is not a diagnosis it is a symptom expression but do all these things exist without a cause it would seem from one opinion that constipation is the disease per se but from another opinion it would appear to be the cause of the disease the diagnosis is made to apply one as much as to the other so old school what do they do they label yes you have constipation so i have understood your disease you have constipation and because of constipation you are not feeling well they immediately gives the reasoning you are not feeling well because you have constipation actually a constipation is one of the symptom with which patient is expressing he is expressing i am not feeling well i am feeling bored i am feeling depressed i am not uh, okay he is expressing the symptoms but symptoms are not important for you because it never denotes any pathological change this is where the allopathy lies what happens after some time what he says 
but this is the character of vagaries. Vagar is so common to the old school whims. Whims manje lahar hoki. Vagaries manje anishchit swarupasa, which is not fixed. Vagaries. But this is the character of Vagar is so common to the old school whims. Vim manje lahar hoki. These symptoms are but the language of nature. Talking out as it were and showing as clearly as daylight the internal nature of the sick man or woman. If this state progresses, the lungs break down. The doctor says, oh, now you have consumption. Consumption word in homeopathy, it is used for tuberculosis. Consumption is Marathi arthakshaya. Upon tuberculosis, la shai rog nito. Manun, consumption is tuberculosis. So, earlier he was having constipation for which the allopath gives some purgatives. After purgatives, he feels temporarily better. And then he started getting up. He goes to the same doctor. Now he ex examines him. He asks, you do the x-ray. And he labels that he is having the tuberculosis. The doctor says, oh, now you have consumption. Or a great change appear in the liver. Or he says, oh, now you have fatty degeneration of the liver. Or albumin appears in the urine and he tells the patient, now I am able to name your disease. You have someone of forms of Bright's disease. What is Bright's disease? Samagdar alert. Bright's disease is glomerulonephritis. It is a kidney, inflammation of the kidney. Bright's disease. It is nonsense to say that prior to the localization of disease, the patient is not sick. So patient was complaining, I am sick, I am sick, I am sick. They are labeling, you are not sick. When he started getting some symptoms, then they exclaim, yes, now you have constipation. Then they give purgatives. Again, patient comes with some form of pathology and then they label, yes, now I'm diagnosing you as a consumption. Now I'm diagnosing you, diagnosing you as a fatty degeneration. Now I'm diagnosing you as a case of Bright's disease. So localization was not there earlier. If you would have been treated at that specific time, you would have been cured. But now what has happened, the patient's complaint started from functional disease to the structural disease. Now he is having the structural pathological disease. You have some, you have someone of the forms of right disease. It is nonsense to say that prior to the localization of disease, the patient is not sick. Does it not seem clear that this patient has been sick and very sick even from his childhood? Under traditional methods, it is necessary that diagnosis is made before the treatment can be settled. But the most cases, the diagnosis cannot be made until the results of the disease have rendered the patient incurable. So many times it happens that patient complains many times with many symptoms. And you are not able to give the name to that disease. Because, because you don't have any pathology to label. And what happens if you would have treated that patient with the help of totality of the symptoms, patient would have cured and no further progress of the disease happens if you treat him on the basis of law of syndrome. But if you don't treat that patient and let it appear or progress, then after some time, the localization takes place and then you label, now you have consumption. The curable disease becomes incurable. The curable entity becomes incurable because, because you have not treated when it was at the functional level. So, the results, you wait till the results of the disease happens to be there. And that is the problem with allopathy. They deal with the results of the disease. They every time waits what is their proof in their hand and then their treatment starts and then they say there is no treatment for this disease. Because they have waited a lot. He says there is no need to wait for it. Again, take the nervous child. Another example he gives. Again, take the nervous child. Nervous means not um, nervous in Marathi. It is nervous means on the tip of nerves, restless, very sharp, very sensitive nervous child. Again, take the nervous child. It has a wild dreams. Twitching, restless sleeps, nervous excitement, hysterical manifestations. 
But if we examine all the organs of the body, we'll find nothing the matter with him. This sickness, however, which is present, if allowed to go on uncured, will in 20 or 30, 20, 20 or 30 years results in tissue change. The organs will become affected and then it will be said that the body is diseased. But the individual has been sick from the beginning. So what he said, he is given another example. If a child who is restless, very nervous, very sensitive, very uh, hysterical, he is having nervous excitement, all those features were functional when disease was not localized. But it takes 20 years, 30 years to get localized in the tissues. And what, what do we do? We never treat that in that specific phase. Or if by chance, if it has been treated by allopath, they treat with tranquilizer only, without utilizing the law of similars or without treating the basic cause. And that's why this is progresses and settles in the issue. But what he says, but the individual has been sick from the beginning. It is a question whether we'll start out and consider the result of the disease or begin at the beginning with the causes. So what he says, it is a question whether to wait to find it out the end products or whether right from the beginning you should start treatment. My personal experience is that if I had child pediatric cases in my hand and if I start treatment to them, they never suffer from the uh, uh, structural disorders in future. They remain healthy for longer time of duration because, because you tackle their diseases mostly at the functional level. If we have material ideas of disease, we'll have material ideas of means of cure. What it means? It means that if you have idea that this finger is having the gangrene and that gangrene is the cause of disease and which is visible to naked eye. So if you think this disease is localized disease in the form of some material, the line of treatment immediately is material Remove that finger, finish. That is the treatment. So if the thought is material, the treatment is material. So if we have material ideas of the disease, we will have material ideas of means of cure. If we believe an organ is sick and alone constitutes the disease, we must feel that if we could remove the organ, we would cure the patient. And this is what happens with the allopathy. They consider that the organ is diseased. So appendicitis, organ is diseased, remove the appendix. Tonsillitis, organ is diseased, remove the tonsils. This happens quite commonly. A man has a necrotic condition of the hand. Then if we believe that only hand is sick, we would think that we had cured the patient by removing, removing his hand. Say the hand is cancerous. According to this idea, it is cancerous in itself and from itself and seeing he would later die from the cancer of his hand, we would conscious, conscientiously remove the hand and secure the patient. For an eruption on the skin, we would use local means to stimulate the functions of the skin and make it heal and believing the eruption had no cause behind it, we would con conscientiously think we have cured the patient. But this is the reductio ad, ad absurdum for nothing exists without the cause. The organs are not the man. The man is prior to the organs. Underline these. These are very important words. The organs are not the man. Man is prior to the organs. From the first to the last is the order of sickness as well as the order of cure from man to his organs and not from organs to man. So if we consider that local pathology is the disease, then our thought runs in that direction. We think that skin eruptions has appeared and it is a local disease. We treat it by local means because our thought is wrong. And what he says, nothing happens without cause. If you read the Stuart Close second chapter general interpretation, he has written eight laws which are there in basic sciences and nature. And where he says the cause and effects are ceaseless. Cause and events, effects are ceaseless. 
So behind every effect, there is a cause, but which is invisible. And if you don't think about invisible things, then you never find the cause. And that's why your treatment in at local means. But if we think the man is prior to the disease, and that man is disease because of which eruptions have happened, then you treat the man and not the skin eruption. So order is very important. It is from man to the disease, not or man to the organ, and not from organ to the man. If we understand this concept of kin, if we understand this concept of the disease, then your treatment will aim at the man and not at the specific organs. And this is very important thing which he has explained. So even whatever may be the patient comes, you have to treat that man, not his organ. Well, then who is the sick man? The tissues could not become sick unless something prior to them had been deranged and so make, make them sick. So what is it? Who is the sick man? The tissues could not make, become sick unless something prior to them had been deranged and so made, make them sick. So something prior is diseased. The trinity is diseased. The vital force is diseased. The principle is diseased. Because of which there is a tissue chain. What is there of this man that can be called the internal man? So who is internal man? Internal man is nothing but your vital principle. What is there that can be removed so that the whole that is physical may be left behind? We say that man dies, but he leaves his body behind. So when, whenever we talk about the man, when he is alive, we talk with his name. And when something happens, by chance, accident happens and he dies, immediately our word changes. What do we, what do we call? Body and ego. We immediately talk about the body. So where was the man? Man has gone. Man has left the, that specific body. So man is inside the, this body. And that man is nothing but the principle. Vital principle. We dissect the body and find all his organs. Everything that we know by senses belongs to the physical man. Everything that we can feel with the fingers and see with the eyes, he leaves behind. The real sick man is prior to the sick body. And we must conclude that sick man must be somewhere in that portion which is not left behind. He has given very good example in order to explain the concept very nicely. He explains that when, whenever that person is died and if we dissect in post-mortem, we, we go on finding it out where is the disease. Actually, we are not finding it out. This is because the man which was deceased was not there. Whatever is there which you find it out is only the changes in the tissue levels with your, either you observe with naked eye or under the microscope. But those were the changes in products, not the disease. This is what's earlier because of which he has died. Which was prior in that man. That was disease. So you have to treat that human being. That was a very important aspect which you have to take into consideration. The real sick man is the prior to the sick body and we must conclude that sick man must be somewhere in the portion which is not left behind. That which is carried away is primary and that which is left behind is ultimate. See, what sentence is very important. That which is carried away is primary and that which is left behind is an ultimate. So the man go, left the body and whatever remain is the ultimate, the end products of his disease. We say the man feels, sees, tastes, hears, he thinks and he lives but there are only outward manifestations of thinking and living. So when we talk about the man, we say he feels, the feelings are there. He sees, he sees with his eyes. He tastes, that he expresses his taste. He expresses his hearing. He thinks and he lives. But these are only outward manifestations of whatever thinking and living. The man wills and understand. Wills means he thinks, he expects something and he understands. The cadaver does not will and does not understand. See the difference between man and cadaver. 
man is having the will and understanding. The cadaver, where the body is there, it cannot think and will and understand. Then that which takes its departure is which knows and wills. So the man left behind, man left that body and that was taken away along with the will and understanding. It is not there with the cadaver. It is that which can be changed and is prior to the body. So if you would have treated him earlier, which was deceased, then this problem would have not arisen. But you have not treated real man. You are, you are finding it out. What are the problems at the tissue level, cellular level, and labeling it and removing that tissue. But the disease was earlier in that specific vital principle. If you are able to understand the disease is there, your treatment should be always aimed at the same point. The combination of these two, the combination of these two, the will and the understanding constitute man. What he is saying? The combination of these two, will and understanding, constitute the man. Yes, and this is real. Why do you are alive? Why do you want to be alive? It is only because of your will. Will is the prime important. Kent says it is most important because of which you remain alive. Because of you, because of will, you have and you had an evolution. Otherwise, you would have not an evolution. So, will and understanding are the basic themes of the human life. And where is the will and understanding? It is there with the internal principle, not with the body. Body never wills. Body never understands. The will is there with the vital principle, means your soul. It wills. That's why everyone wills it, wills is every time different. Everyone's understanding is different because that man is different and man is inside. The combination of these two, the will and understanding, constitute man, conjoined, they make life an activity. See, together they make the life an activity. They manufacture the body and cause all things of the body. They manufacture the body. The, the, on that day, we have discussed the same law, law, work, what law? The law of biological development. Functions creates the organ. So, will creates the organs. First, will is there. Yes, you have to do this work. You have to do this work. You have to do this work. And then, organ is developed. So, first is functions. Prior to that is will. And because of will, the things happen. So, cause all things of the body with the will and understanding, operating in order, we have healthy man. Till your will and understanding is operating in healthy way, we remain healthy. So, unless and until this will is disturbed, you never get disturbed. Unless and until your understanding never gets disturbed, you are healthy. But once it gets disturbed, you are deceived. So, with the will and understanding operating in order, we have healthy man. It is not our purpose to go behind the will and understanding, to go prior to these. What is he, see what he is saying? It is not our purpose to go behind the will and understanding only. But before that, who is prior to will and understanding? It is enough to say that they were created. The man is the will the, and the understanding and the house which he lives in his body. So man, where is the man? Man is his soul. Man is his vital principle. Then we is there. Then understanding, will and understanding is there. Because of will and understanding, the rest of the body is there. Rest of the organs are there. So prior is the man. And where it is, it is in the principle. We must to be scientific homeopaths. Recognize that the muscles, the nerves, the ligaments and the other parts of the man's brain are the are a picture and manifest to the intelligent physician, the internal man. See, he is explaining very scientifically the concept what he wants to put forward. So what he says? We must to be a scientific homeopath. We recognize that the muscles, the nerves, the ligaments and other parts of the man's frame, so this body, this frame, are a picture and manifest to be intelligent physician 
manifest to the intelligent physician the internal man. So external body is the result of internal man. Both the dead and the living body are to be considered not from the body to the life, but from the life to the body. Very important thing. You have to think about the, everything from life to the body and not from the body to the life. If you were to describe the difference between the two human faces, their character and everything you observe their action, you would be describing scarcely more than will. The will is expressed in the face. Its result is implanted on the countenance. See what he is explaining. He is explaining two import, most important things. If you were to describe the difference between two human faces, don't tear and marla for their character and everything you observe of their action, you would be describing scarcely more than you. You are not expressing only, only the external things. You are going to express the will of the human being. The will is expressed in the face. It's the result is implanted on the countenance. Countenance manje chehre patti. Chehra. So will is expressed in the face. What is saying? It is expressed on the face. Have you ever studied the face of an individual who has grown up murdered, grown up a murderer or a villain of some sort? See what is he is giving you an example. What he says, have you ever studied the face of an individual who has grown up as a murderer or a villain of some sort? Is there no difference between the face, his face, and that of one? who has will to do good in life of writing. See, the simple, simple examples and illustrations, he tries to make it uh, impact on your body, in our mind, that there is a difference between the faces of the villain and faces of the person who was really a good worker. Their faces are always different. So what is difference? Difference is life inside. Difference lies in their will. Difference lies in their understanding, which is getting expressed on the face. And that's why you differentiate. Yes, this is the hero and this is the villain. Go down into the lowest parts of our great city and study the faces of these people. This is the habit one should develop. Whenever you are sitting in front of television, just go on reading the faces. If you are watching the match, just go on seeing the faces of them. You have, if you are watching the movie, just go on seeing the, Then you will understand what he wants to say. These people are night prowlers. Night prowlers. Prowlers manje bhakshya sodna sati bhataknare. Ratarvar bhataknare. Kona bhaktit bolla to villain bhakti. These people are night prowlers. They are up late at night studying villainly. If we inquire into it, we will see that their affections are of that kind. They have the stamp upon their faces. They have evil affections and evil face. Evil affection, evil manjadushta, white. They have evil affections and evil face. And this is true with the villains. This is true with the people who are criminal. Their faces look criminal. You immediately catch it out. Yes, this, his look is criminal. He is no, not looking normal. Because it is expressing his inner will. The countenance is then expressive of the heart. See, very important sentence. The countenance, countenance manje puna chere bati. The countenance is there, there, then is expressive of the heart. It is expressive about the heart, emotions. Allopathy, pathology, recognizes nothing but man's body. See, here he differentiates. Allopathic pathology recognizes Nothing but man's body. Yet one can easily confuse the allopath by asking him what man's thought is, what man is. There is no answer to them. If you ask regarding those things, instead of a pathology, they, they will not going to answer because they, they never think about internal man. The homeopath must master these things before he can perceive the nature of the cause of disease. And before he can understand what cure is. And he is explaining you. You must learn this. These are very important things. You must master these things. To read the faces. To read the internal man. With the help of countenance. Then you will be easy. It will be easy for you to treat that man. Which is lying inside. 
So if you treat internal man who is diseased, who is criminal, and if you give a right stimulus, I, I, I have, there is my blog. Uh, you can go with the blog. Uh, it is www.drprasadrasad.blogspot.in. I'll leave him that letter. www. Type dot Dr. Prasad Rasar blogspot Dr. Prasad Prasad Rasar dot blogspot dot in or dot com. And I have written one first um, article over there in the blog, uh, While I Become Swalmiki. Read that case. It was a wonderful case to be read. And I have shown that case very thoroughly. Both full aspects of the human life, how that fellow who was absolutely a different after remedy acid fuel, how he came out and he becomes a very perfect human being. It was wonderful. And this is this is what you have to treat. All his complaints vanish thereafter. And these are very essential things which we have to understand. So you must go with that. There are many things over there. Uh, you can find it out in the, in the blog. So we have to understand. We should be able to catch the internal man when we are treating the human. So we have to go with this. We have to understand the real man which is hidden inside and which is expressed through the external appearance. And we have to treat that because of which he is diseased. So disease is an expression of the internal man who is diseased. Internal man means internal vital principle. We'll stop over here. Tomorrow we'll continue with it and we'll continue because it is a big chapter. I think two more, two more lectures will be needed to understand this concept of sick. But once you understand the concept of sick, you are able to treat, you will you'll get an exact idea what you have to treat. You don't have to treat the pathology, you have to treat that man, that's all. Once you treat that man, it will be very easy to find it out, a remedy for that. So understand the concepts which are explained by Kent in detail and he is very clear with his idea. So will and understanding two things constitute the man. Will and understanding constitutes the Maya term, Sora. That is the Sora inside the human being. That concept he has elaborated over there. And this is what we have to understand. So we'll finish over here. Thank you being there. Many people who have joined today. Thanks a lot. And be there daily to learn the Kent's philosophy. And if any queries are there, we'll have chat. Otherwise, we'll finish the lecture. So Kent's philosophy is really a very interesting philosophy which defines exactness of the homeopathic understanding of human being. So thank you. We'll meet tomorrow at the same time.